What's up everybody, how's it going? This is a Google coding interview with a college student. I paired up with Tim, you may know him from his YouTube channel, Tech with Tim. He's got a very popular YouTube channel. He posts all sorts of videos related to programming. Check it out if you're into programming, which you probably are if you're watching this video. We also did a couple of collaboration videos on his channel, so be sure to show him some love. But so, Tim is a first or second year college student in Canada. He's currently preparing for coding interviews at a couple of big tech companies after the holiday break, and we decided let's do a mock Google coding interview for all of you. Now, two little notes before we jump into the interview. The first one is that I conducted this interview exactly as I conducted coding interviews at Google. This is exactly what a phone interview would look like because we were on Hangouts, we weren't in person. It's conducted on a Google Doc. I know you all love Google Docs for coding interviews. Smash the like button if you like Google Docs. Oh God, what have I done? I think there's gonna be maybe one or two people who smash the like button because they love Google Docs for coding interviews? Smash the like button anyway, but so yes, this is what a real Google coding interview would look like. The second note that I wanted to say is that Tim has actually been preparing for his coding interviews for the past two to three weeks using AlgoExpert, my company, AlgoExpert.io. He's been doing a bunch of the questions. I think he told me he did about 50 questions. Now, the funny thing here is that I actually told him to prepare with easy, medium, and hard questions. So he did a bunch of those, and you know, my being the nice guy that I am, I ended up picking a very hard question from Algo Expert to give him for this interview. Now, I know for a fact that he hadn't seen that question. He told me he didn't look at any of the very hard questions. So everything is fair game. And with that, see if you can follow along and enjoy the video. Oh, and the last five to 10 minutes of the video are a debrief session where he and I just kind of analyzed how he did in the interview. For real now, enjoy. All right, so Tim, we're about to start the mock Google coding interview. Is there anything that you wanna to say to the audience? Yeah, so I figured I'd just give you guys a little background of kind of my prep for this, so maybe you have an idea where I'm coming from. So I'm 19, I'm not sure if Clem mentioned that previously. Uh, I'm currently looking for some internships for the summer. So I've been using Algo Expert for probably the past two to three weeks. And I've got fairly mm -hmm. comfortable doing most of the me medium and easy problems. The hard ones I'm still kind of working towards, but I'm definitely getting better. And yeah, that's kind of the level. I'm excited to do this. And it's obviously some great practice for when I go and do some other coding interviews at real companies in the future. Awesome. And we also actually did one practice mock coding interview before this. So Tim got a little bit of experience doing interviews with me just, you know, before. But For sure. with that, Tim, let's begin. I'm going to start the 45 minute timer now. Awesome. All right. So Tim, when we tried to get this to happen, this mock coding interview, we naturally mm -hmm. had to put something on the calendar, right? We had to find a time that Indeed. worked for both of us and, you know, give ourselves 45 minutes or an hour to make sure that we had uh, enough time to record this. So I want you to write an algorithm that is going to basically take two people's calendars. You can imagine Google okay. calendars, and it's going to yep. basically return free slots of time during which these two people could have a meeting. Now here, I'm going to add okay. a few other things to make sure that we're, we're really on the same page here. You can imagine that our calendars are going to basically be in the format of starting, like they're going to be lists of tuples mm -hmm. or lists of lists of length two. So it's gonna okay. be something like, you know, one calendar would look like this, where it might be noon to, uh, let's say 1 p.m. Then it might be okay. uh, 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m., something like that. And it would actually be in military time. So it'd be 15 to okay, 16.30. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And so this would be one calendar, maybe mine. This means that I have meetings between noon and one, between three mm -hmm. and 4.30. I'm gonna give you a second calendar, which is gonna be your calendar. And then I'm also gonna give you some daily bounds because you can imagine that you might not wanna have meetings before let's say 8 a.m. Or you might not wanna yeah. have meetings after let's say 6 p.m. So I'll also give you something like daily bounds okay. equals let's say, 8, 8 a.m., and let's say uh, 6 p.m., which would be 18. So this means that mm -hmm. you not only have these meetings here, 
but you also yep. don't want to schedule meetings before 8 or after 6 p.m. Okay? Okay. So given... And, so sorry, a, Yeah, given two calendars and two daily bounds, and I'll give you a sample input in a second, and a meeting duration. So in our example, you know, we need about an hour for this interview, but the meeting yes. duration could be any duration. I want you to return a list of availabilities during which we could schedule our meeting. So here's an example, and then feel free to ask me anything you want. Okay. All right. Okay. So sorry, I'm just looking at that now. I thought you were actually going to continue. That's why I was silent. No, no, no problem. Um. So, okay. Yeah. So can we assume that any like time you give me for a meeting is within the bounds you gave me? What do you mean by that? So for example, say like say you said like you know person one says they have a meeting for like they only want to book meetings from nine a.m. till in this case I guess we'll say you know twenty. What is that? Eight p.m. Yep. Then all the meetings you give me will be within those bounds, right? There'll yes. be no meeting that starts at like 8, 8.30 or 8.45 or something. Okay. Yes. And there'll be all, like we can assume all valid input, right? And these are, okay, so these are strings. That's interesting as well, okay. Yep, they're all valid inputs. Okay. They're all strings mm -hmm. and they're all in military time. So, you know, the, yes. you know okay. 3 p.m. is 15. And so it looks like these are sorted right now. I'm going to assume they're not necessarily sorted. No, you actually can assume that they are sorted. You can almost imagine oh, that okay. like when you open your Google Calendar, you kind of see the meetings in sorted order, you know, in descending order from yeah. the, the beginning of the day to the end. You can imagine that that's the order they're going to be given in. Okay. And last thing here. So, f for example, if we saying, uh, I'm looking at input to all highlighted so you can see here. Um, yep. 10 to 1130. So then 1130 is the end, 1230 is the start. So I can obviously say that I could have a meeting from 1130 to 1230, right? Like that would be, I know this says 30, but that would be valid 1130 to 1230. 1130 to right? 1130 to 1230 would indeed be a valid block during which you could schedule okay. a 30 minute meeting. But because at the top here, you have this person, or in this case, let's say yeah. me, who has a 12 p.m. meeting, as you can see in the answer, the, the block that we would be able to schedule would only be until 12. Okay. So, okay. So uh, yeah. Okay. So obviously that makes sense. But um, yeah, I was just trying to figure out, you know, if we, st if the meeting ends at 1130, the next meeting can start at 1130. And then if the meeting yes. ends at 1230, the next meeting can start at 1230. So I don't have to do like 1231 or something like that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So I think um, my initial kind of idea here is I'm going to look at one person's calendar to start and I actually only really care about the end times because the start time, I like obviously I can't start and hmm, so actually I do care about the start times, but the end times are what I want to start by looking at. So essentially I'll look at the end time 1130 and then I'll look at the next start time and say, okay, if there is enough time within that block for whatever this um, meeting duration is. So in this case, when I'm looking at 1130 and I'm looking at 1230, I know I have an hour. So that's an hour of free time that I could technically book a meeting. So what I would want to do then is check in the other person's calendar if they have time available between 1130 and 1230. Yes. So in this instance, what I would do is say, okay, so a, between 11:30, I'll add 30 to that. If I can book something in that time, so between 11:30 and 12, that's valid. Because that's kind of like the naive approach, I think, to do that. Now, because this is sorted, like I feel like I could search in this a more effective way to find whether they have a valid meeting time. Uh, right now, I'm just sorry, I'm just kind of talking out loud, trying to explore the yeah, problem yeah. for myself and get an idea of how I want to do this. Okay. So yeah, so I think that initial approach is gonna be to look in one person's meeting, this will be kind of my step one of the algorithm, and figure out essentially all the spare times that they have. Because if I can figure out the spare blocks of times they have, that's step one that's gonna help me towards the final solution, which is then just comparing those spare blocks of time to this next person's input. So how do I figure out the spare blocks of time? Well, I look at the ending time of one block, and I look at the starting time of the next block, and then essentially, if I have time in between that, then I can make another list and say, okay, so I have an availability in this person's schedule between 1130 and 1230. Then I could go 
continually so here 430 okay so there's no time here so now I'm gonna look at the end block here which is 15 the start block here which is 16 that means I now have an hour available there so between 15 and 16 I could book a meeting then I'll look at 17 and when I actually get to the end block here what I can say is well that will go to whatever our bound is so in this case 1830 I technically would have availability from 17 o'clock until 1830 because that's the bound that you gave me there and then right. same thing here at the front I could treat this as the end time of say you know another block and say okay well from 10 to 10 uh, well obviously I can't do anything there because that's the bound okay so once I can do that aspect then what I need to do is compare it to this block here so if I have and I'm just gonna sorry I'm just gonna write some lists down here yeah so let's say I can generate my list that look like 1130 so I have an availability I know in person to schedule and I guess it doesn't really matter which person I do this for but let's just do person two for now at 1130 to 1230 I don't have anything at the upper bound because 10 is that upper bound I have an availability from 15 to 16 so let's do this 15 oh, that should be a string but that's okay if you want you can remove the quotes for now if it's too if it's annoying yeah it's okay it's just it's just a habit of mine to to do it like that okay and then i would have an availability because now the ocd is going to kick in if i don't do it every time <laughs> 17 to uh 18 30. okay okay so so these are my list of available times from this schedule and i think i i mean correct me if i did that wrong but i'm pretty sure that is right for the yep. available times that person two has for person then two, yeah. what i should yeah for person two so now what i want to do is compare this to person one so how do i do that so this person hmm, has their bounds of nine to ten. Oh, so what i think i should probably do is actually the same thing for person two and i'll already have a function that can do this for me so that will actually mean i'm not going to be repeating really any logic and actually now i'm going to go no quotes so in this case 9 to 10 30 i have a time from 10 30 to 12 available and then i have a time from 13 to what is it 16 and then i have a time from 18 to 20. so sorry i forget what oh so the output is all the times that they could possibly have a meeting okay so all the all good, the good. available blocks of time so it's not necessarily all the 30 minute increments it's basically okay all the free blocks of time during which you ah. could schedule a meeting okay so what i think now i need to do is say okay so my start time I have between 11:30 and 12:30. So now what I'm going to do is look at the end. Oh, because now I got to figure out what time. So this, there's an availability here from 10:30 to 12:30. So maybe what I can do is say if 11:30 is in between these two blocks, and I have half an hour between this end time. Ah, see now I'm kind of confusing myself a bit because now I have to get I got to get all the available blocks, not just the 30 minute intervals hmm. okay sorry just give me one sec to think yeah no problem this. no problem yeah okay so 11 30. Hmm. so 11 30 is the earliest possible time i could have a meeting and then if the earliest possible time is 10 30 and it goes to 12 then i guess i could have a meeting from 10 30 to 12. So what I'm thinking is find the beginning time here. Uh, oh, yeah. okay. Because what I'm think what where I'm getting hung up here is like what if I had something like eleven? Because I guess I could have this like eleven fifty eight. Yeah. Technically, this this wouldn't be enough time to have a meeting, right? Yep. So what I might what I would do then I guess is just strictly remove that because I can't have a meeting within that block of time. So if I can do that first, so essentially remove any blocks of time that are less than half an hour then that's going to help me a little bit more towards the final solution so let's say that's another step so we're going to start by building all of the blocks of available time that either person could have yeah and then what i'm going to do is remove any blocks that are invalid so if it's less than half an hour in between then get rid of them because there's no point we can't even we can't book a meeting in that or half an hour for this example but whatever that time is okay uh, and this will be sorry this will be in minutes right so this will be this would be 30. Uh, so 30 would represent 30 minutes. If it were one hour, it would be 60. Okay. Could be 90 right, minutes. And then, 
Okay. All right. So what's once I remove that, then what I need to do is say, okay, so I have block from 10 30 to 12. So now I'll look at this first block because these will be still in sorted order based on just the property of when I'm adding them in. Um, and I'll say if 15 is in between these two blocks, let's check if we can do a meeting. Okay, it's not in between these two blocks. So let's move to the next block. Okay, so 15 is in between this next block. I know that I have enough time in here to do a 30 minute meeting because I know that th these is a valid range. So now I check since 15 is in between these two blocks of time. If there's half an hour to the end time or whatever that time is. So here I'll find 15, then I'll compare it to the end time and I'll figure out what the difference between those two are. If that is greater than half an hour, then what I'll simply do is go 15 to the end time, I think. Yeah, and that looks like that works based on this 15 to the end time if the end time is greater than half an hour because at any point in there, I could blow, book a meeting. But as an example, now, a quick question, yeah. sorry to cut you off. Sure. Imagine that here you had had a bunch of other uh, availabilities basically here from yeah. like person two. Let's suppose that this was person two. You had had something like, you know, 12.30 to, uh, I don't know, to 14. Um, or, or rather, mm -hmm. let's say you, you start over from the beginning. Let's say you had had, you know, 7 to 8. Then you had had, um, you know, 9 to 10. Then you had had 11 to noon and so on and mm -hmm. so forth. How would, you, how would you know that this 15 to 16 here sort of, yeah, corresponds or can be kind of merged into this 13 to 16. Uh, okay, so well, the reason I'm saying that is because the 15 is in between these two numbers. So in this instance, when I have 11, 12, well, obviously 15 isn't in between those two numbers. So I know I can't book anything in here because well, 15 is is greater than the end time, right? Um, okay, so if it's in between these two values, which it will, it, and I think that's like a valid comparison um, just to check, you know, if it's less than whatever. Um, then if it's in between the two values, which it is here, I can look at the end time specifically and figure out the difference between my start time and this end time. Then what I can actually do, I think, is take the minimum of whatever the end time is here and whatever the end time end time is here. And that is a valid block to book a meeting in. And then I've eliminated now from this list this block here, I figured out that I can have a meeting based on this time from, I guess, what is it? 15 to 16. So now I can move to my next block, which is 17 to 830. Okay. So now that I'm at now, does that, is that like answer your question? What I was yep. saying? There? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So now that I'm at 17 and 830, what I'll do is I'll figure out if 17 is in between um, any of these values. So now I've actually, I know that it, the last one was in between here. So I can actually just start looking from here, right? Because I know this is sorted. So I don't even need to bother looking at the rest of the list, but that's kind of an optimization technique that I will focus more on later. Um, so I'll look, I'll start looking here. I'll say 17 is not in between these two numbers, but 17 is in between 18 and oh, 17 is not in between 18 and 20. Ah, okay. So that's where that falls apart. If I'm just looking at the start time. Hmm. Okay. So 17. 18. So if I just look at the start time, that doesn't work. I need to look at, I think maybe the start time and the end time and see if they're in between those two values. Cause if the end time is in between the two values, which in this case is 1830. Hmm. So Tim, let's take a then, quick step yeah. back. Cause I think that you're, sure. you're on the right track here. You have the, you have the idea, but now you're at this step of, of having to kind of figure out where you can kind of merge these availabilities, yeah, right? So exactly, yeah. If we take a step back, the first thing that you did, you even said that you would have this reusable function, yeah. is you transformed for each person, you transformed their calendar into a mm -hmm. new calendar of blocks of time when the person is available, right? Yes. Like these times here represent chunks of time where the person is available. And yes. you filtered these and you said, remove any chunk of time that's less than our meeting duration, correct? Exactly, yes. So basically, what you did is you you almost answered the question, but just for one calendar yeah. in the first step. Exactly. Right, okay. Yeah. So now let's see if we could if we could simplify the approach that you're going with, 
which I think could yeah. work, but might be you might have a little bit more complication when you're trying to merge the things. Imagine yeah. you could have imagine you could have instead of at the beginning when you took a calendar, like you took this calendar of unavailabilities, right? Or of meetings, and you went, you calculated the in-betweens, right? You took the things in between yeah. and these were your availabilities, and then you filtered them. Imagine mm -hmm. you had in this calendar, you had a mixture of both calendars. So you basically, you, you, you do the opposite of what you did. Instead of first finding the availabilities, imagine you had first merged both of these meetings or both of these calendars okay. rather. You merged both of them when, when you have the meetings, you, you kind yeah. of, you mix them such that you have all of the Ooh. blocks of time when one or both of the individuals are unavailable. Yeah. Right? One or both are unavailable, and then you do your step of calculating the in-betweens, which at that point essentially gives you the answer. Does that make sense? Ah, uh, okay, I know exactly what you're saying. So what you're saying, I'm, I'm doing this two times and then trying to merge. Why don't I just make one big list, do it once, and then I don't need to even bother with this merge step, which is obviously going to be very complicated based on what I've been talking about. Perhaps. Is that, is, okay, yeah, perhaps. So I'm thinking... What I, so if I can actually, I want to write like a merged version of this. So I need to merge them in sorted order. So to do that, I can do, it's almost like you would do it in merge sort, right? Where I'm going to just insert this one. Then I'll check in here if I can insert it. If I can, I'll insert it. Then we'll go to the next one. Then we'll insert. So I know how to do that. So I can insert this in sorted order. So now if I have one that's in sorted order, then I can calculate the in-between times. Then I can filter. And then whatever blocks of time I have in my remain, like what in my filtered list are the times that they should be available. I think that makes sense. I really, I just want to write these. Um, yeah. They, like if, as one. If you want to write, exactly. Like write that merged thing that you just mentioned. Yeah. Cause I mean, I think that makes sense, but I got to visualize this first to be able to figure it out. Right. Because the, okay. So now it gets a little bit complicated just because this goes from nine to 10 30 and then this is 10 to 11 30. Right. So that's to, to the merge them is going to be a bit of a different process than what I had come up with before, but we will sort them by start times. Uh, okay. So let's go 16, 18. And by the way, sorry, how much time do I have? Uh, left you, on the thing? you still have 25 minutes and don't worry about it for now. Just you're, you're doing good. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah. I just really want to understand the problem before I start doing a massive code. Right. Uh, yep. Okay. So what I think now, so now that I have these together, now I got to yeah. come up with a better way to figure out which blocks of time are available because there will be some overlaps in some of the times, whereas in the other ones, there wouldn't have been overlaps. So that would have been easier. So here we start at nine, we go to 1030. So what I can do is actually look at, so I'll say 1030 is my end time. My next start time is 10. So what I'll actually do is make this the next start time if this start time is less than the end time. Then right. that way I know I'll have the availability from 10.30, uh, oh, actually 10. So yeah, so if I could change, so say I could change this to be 10.30, then that makes it a little bit easier. Cause then now I know from 11.30 to 12 is fine. And then, okay, so this is greater than this. So if I could change this to be 13, this should be giving me valid. I'm just going to change it to make sure it makes sense. And here, 15, here, Tim, I would almost argue, do you yeah. even need to do that? Or can you even just somehow no, I, I don't, I don't, delete this? I don't need to. Ch and, and just merge the two times together. That's <laughs> exactly. That would probably make more sense. So essentially, if, if I could go back to what I had. So if I have this, if this time is greater than this time, then merge these two entries. So I think that'll be my first step in the process. So then we now have this new list. So now this is my last end time. This is my newest start time. So now I have from here to here, since this entry is less than this, I'll check if this block of time is the amount of allotted time we need. And if it is, I can add that into this output. Next, we go from 12 to 13. And then since these times are the same, I can merge them. So I can go like that. And now what I can do is now look oh, since these times are the same, I can merge them again. Okay. So let's merge them uh, like that. And now, okay. So this is less than this. So is it more than half an hour? It is. Okay. So let's add 15 and 16 to our output. 
Okay, now let's look at 1816. Oh, this is greater than this one. So what can I do? I can merge them. Okay, and I get 1817. And now what I need to do, actually, sorry, like this, uh, 18. So that, okay, so this is where it's a little bit confusing for me is because these are the same start times. And then this yep. end time is actually greater than this end time, right? So since this is greater than this, I need to check if this is greater than the end time too. Because if it's greater and than which the one other end you... time, then really, then I would take the max, obviously. Would you take the right? max or the min? <laughs> well, if the, if I'm available from, if I'm not, a or, oh, this is, sorry, this is a list of my, no, this is a list of my non-available times. That yeah, I've this is when, when this is when one yeah. of the two people is booked. Yeah, so this is when they're booked. So if I'm booked from 16 to 18, well then this doesn't even, this isn't really even relevant because I'm booked from 16 yep. to 18, which means I'd be booked from 16 to 17 anyway. So I would take the max. Yep. Okay. I would definitely take the max. Okay. okay. Sorry, you just confused me a little bit with that. That's okay. <laughs> I I, I okay, totally so 16, didn't just get confused myself. Okay. <laughs> All right, you're good. Okay, great. Yeah, so I was taking a sip of water. Now, what I will do is look at the bounds that I have. So what I can do with the bounds is simply take the min of whatever these bounds are. So in this case, I'll take, oh, sorry, I need to take the max on the, yeah, well, it'll be the max on the left side, the min on the right side. I think that makes sense. Um, yeah, so max on left side, min on right side. So in this case, this would be the bounds I want to look at 10 to 830. And then I could just see, um, then I need to look at the first entry in my list. And I will I actually need to merge that again. So these bounds now <laughs> are getting me a little bit uh, tricky as well. So if I have like, and I do like 10 like that, I would just I think what I can actually do is just compare 10 to whatever this first start time is. Yep. And then I can just change this almost to be just 10. But if for example this said 930, then I would just need to scrap this whole thing. So I actually what I think I could do is probably just compare all these blocks of times to whatever the bounds that I have and if they don't fall within the bounds, I'll modify them or remove them. And for, for now, um, for now, let's let's actually just yeah. keep the bounds even aside, because I think I understand where okay. you're getting at. But let's even yeah. forget about the bounds for a second. Let's not complicate ourselves. Yeah. OK, so I think maybe now is probably actually a decent time to start writing something. So okay. I'll run through this one more time just to make sure that I'm refreshed. What I'm going to do is insert in sorted order into a large list, both the availability or the I guess the busy times of person one and of person two. Yep. I'm going to ignore these bounds for now because those we'll talk about later, I guess. Um, and then what I'm going to do is do those comparisons that I talked about. So I'm going to compare, you know, not, so I'm going to compare the end time to this end time. And I'm going to say, okay, well, if this is greater than this, I'll merge them together. But if this end time in the, the other list is less than the end time here, I can actually just remove this entry altogether. Right. Um, because that'll just give me because I'll be busy during that time. Yep. Then I'll I'll do the same thing uh, for the next one. So I'll look at 12 uh, to 13. Oh, this will be a big list. So we'll do that all together. And then when I get to the end of that, what I can do is literally just compare what I talked about for the end time to the next start time. If there's enough time there, I'll add that to the output. Yep. Same okay. thing here, right? If there's enough time here, I'll add that to the output. Okay. So let's start doing this. Um, Okay, and again, the capitals here are going to be weird. Don't worry, Google Docs. So define. Don't worry about the capitals. Yeah, don't worry about the the auto caps and all that. Define. Is there a name for this? Well, a calendar. I'll just oh. call it a veil for now. I don't. Yeah. Sure, that's fine. Okay, calendar veil. Um, I'll just I'll ignore the uh, the bounds for now in in my input. We can change them later. So I'll say, person one. Schedule, uh, person two schedule uh and then what else do i need i need time so we'll do that and i time is i'm gonna write this in python so time is actually fine as a keyword yep. okay so now what i need to do is i need to insert these into sort order so that means i need to make a list so i'm gonna say and by um, the way feel free you know, to feel free to simplify the variables if it's too annoying to type out up to you okay there we go we'll do that 
So, and yeah, just for case sense. Okay, so book times. So now I need to get into the issue of how am I gonna compare these string numbers? So I almost wanna make a function just to compare these to tell me, um, I'm gonna do it like I would actually do it in Java and get like the one, negative one, zero based on if it's greater than or less than for comparison. So I'm gonna say define compare times. I'm gonna say time one, time two. Now we need to get our hours and we need to get our minutes. So I'm gonna say, hour one equals and in this case it's going to be time one dot splits colon and i think i can actually do um hour one minute one is going to be time one dot split that should actually decompose that because i know and i'm guaranteed that i'm going to have these zero zeros and will i have uh yeah so that should be fine because i can split at the colon yeah and, and you can assume split. assume that these strings are going to be in such a way that your math here is correct and you don't need to do fancy edge case handling or anything. Okay, <laughs> good, because I was gonna make it a lot more complicated for not even really part of the problem. Okay, so now we'll have hour one, minute one. So we can start by saying if, and actually I could literally just convert these to minutes and then do the comparison. So I could just do hour one times 60 plus. Okay, so let's actually do that. Uh, it's gonna be hour one, minute one, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we're gonna just say time one, I'm gonna change that to my initial variable is gonna be int hour one multiplied by 60 plus minute one, and then time two equals int, and that should be actually an int as well. Minute one, and we'll say int hour two time 60 plus int minute two. And do a quick check here. I think that should hopefully just give me kind of the amount of time in minutes because 18 times 60 since it's 24 hour time, that should be right. Plus int minute. Yeah, I think that's right. Sure. And then what, what I'm going to say is if time one is greater than time two, return one. One will stand for greater than. And then we'll say elif time one is less than time two return uh this will be negative one which will be less than and then else return zero which will mean that it's the same so i'm just kind of stealing that from the compare to method in java that they usually use so we'll sure. just say this will be same okay and now what i need is to create this kind of schedule thing so uh, how do I insert these times in sorted order well I'm gonna have to use those comparisons okay, okay so we'll start by just comparing the start times I guess and just imp inserting essentially what the earliest start times in are into our list so I'm just gonna say four oh I need actually I'm gonna say p1 which is just gonna stand for pointer one okay. and p2 b0 zero, zero I'm gonna say wow well, p1 is less than the length of p1 and i'm actually just gonna make it p1s i know this is like not the best way to name them but it's just gonna save me a bit of time because i know i'm running a bit low yep. uh while p1 time is less than that or p2 is less than the len of p2s we're gonna say if in this case p1s uh, at pointer one start time which will be zero yep so we're gonna have to say if compare times p1s and then p2s at pointer two zero so that should actually compare our time so if that equals equals one which is actually we're going to say negative one this will mean that we are less than so p1 less than p2 yep so then we'll insert that into our book time so we'll say booked underscore times dot append and then this should be p p1 s p1 i hate reading this but that's okay uh and then we'll say p1 plus equals one so p1 plus equals one so okay. that should increment our pointers um so p1 i think yeah i think that actually will work and then we'll say otherwise then we can just insert the other one. So we say booked the square times dot append. And if they're the same, we're just going to default to insert the other one, I guess, Fair uh, enough. which is fine. So we'll say p times dot append p2s p1 
P2 and then P2 plus equals one. Okay, so after this is done, assuming I didn't make any mistakes, then this should actually give me that sorted list. Now I'm kind of doing this the way that you do it like in merge sort where you just compare like, you know, this one to this one. And then, you know, our next pointers up at this one, if we insert this first one, and then I compare this one to this one, then I insert this, then my next pointer is here. Then I compare it to this one, I insert that, my next pointer is here, I compare this one to this one, insert that. So I think you're following me with that, right? That makes sense? Yep. Okay, so now that we have that, now it's time to do that kind of parsing through with a which is gonna be a little bit more complicated like we talked about before. So I'm gonna say for, I'll just do for i in range the len of booked underscore times. Okay. By the way, you still now have uh, do... 12 minutes, so you're, you're good on time. Okay, great. So for i in range the len of book times and let's see, but while we're up here, we're gonna say, I'm just gonna call this available. Uh, you know what, I feel like I'm gonna spell that wrong. So let's just call this output. Okay. Close that so we can store our stuff in there. For i in range the len of booked times. Now I want to go through my thing one more time. So essentially what I'm gonna do is compare the ending time of entry one uh, to the start time of entry two. If this time is greater than this, then we can mush them together. But if this time here is, um, what do you call it? If this time here is actually less than the other time, then I can straight up just remove this entire entry. Okay. I think that makes sense. Uh, okay, so I'm still debating whether or not that's perfect, but I think that's okay. So for I, line of book time, since we're gonna compare it to the one above, but I could actually technically be removing stuff so I almost just want to say, do a while loop. Cause if I'm going to be removing stuff from the loop that from the list that I'm looping in, that's going to cause issues. So I almost want to use a while loop instead. And then if I remove something, just leave the pointer or whatever the index it was at before. Um, yeah. So let's do that. Do so you, you can say, I, do you say, need to, do you need to mutate this booked times list or can you mutate maybe the output list? I mean, up to you, whatever you feel more comfortable writing. Yeah, um, I don't think I need to mute, like I definitely don't need to mutate the book times list, but kind of the way I'm thinking about it right now, I don't have like a better idea okay, for yeah. how to not mutate it. Although I think actually like I can probably come up with the output in this for, in one loop while I'm looping through. I don't think I actually need to even change this or do another loop, which is kind of what I was planning to do, but I might confuse myself a bit while I'm coding that. Um, in the interest of time, think. I would probably go with, well, there are two arguments here, but I would probably go with what's least confusing to you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so I'm going to say I equals zero yeah. while I is less than the len of, and this len will update every time. So that should be good. The len of booked underscore times. I'm going to say now I need to compare the end time of entry, whatever to the next entry, which actually means that this should be a negative one here okay so now we're going to say start one or actually end. i'll just say end one equals in this case booked underscore times i one and then we'll say start two equals booked underscore times i zero now what we need to do is say if and one is greater than, now I need to use my compare times method. Yeah. If compare times and one start two, I gotta remember what I wanted to do there. So if the end here is greater than the start here, I need to modify the list. Otherwise, I think I can actually just look at the distance between this and the start time and figure out what that should be. Okay, so if this time is one, so that essentially means if the end of my other one is greater than the start of my other one, now what I wanna do is figure out what the end of the other one was. So I'm gonna say end two equals, in this case, booked underscore times. This should be, 
and this needs to be i plus one. Okay. Add on that. Yep. I plus one, and this needs to be one. Now I want to figure out what I should do here. Um, actually, I don't even think I think I could just like skip to the next entry if this if it's the case that the other end is greater. Yeah. So if I'm looking here and I do, uh, let's have, find an example here. Like. I'm kind of mad that I've let, got rid of my example. If I did like 15, what is it? 17. Yeah. So if this is greater than this, yeah. But this is greater than this one. Then what I need to do is put 18 here. But if this is say 1630, then what I can do is literally just skip over this entry. I think because there will be no availability in that time. So I should go. I plus two maybe, um, I think that works. If I just skip past that, I plus equals two rather than I plus equals one because if the end time is greater. So if and if compare times, and in this case, end two, uh, in this case, I guess go end one equals equals one. So that should mean that the end time of the other one is greater than this end time. Then I could skip over it. Yep. Otherwise, so if the compare times actually, so if it is isn't the case that I have that edge case. So let's say we have the example here, eleven thirty, twelve thirty, because that'll be what I get into the else statement. Then what I can do is calculate the difference in time. If that is greater than whatever that value is, a pass to me, I can just send that into the output list as that should be an answer because I should be able to book a time between that end time and between the next start time. I think that's logical. So uh, otherwise, if so, now I actually need to figure out the difference in times. Um, I'm just gonna write like a pseudo function that says like difference sure. in time and like I'll. I'll I can code it later if I have time. It'll say if diff in time, and we'll go between end one start two is greater than or equal to what did I call that variable? But here, time. here, Tim, by by yeah. doing this, I, I get that you're trying to you're kind of like trying to skip ahead here and basically get yeah. an answer right off the bat. But in the case above here, you won't have done this. So will you not basically be like by doing by trying to get the answer immediately in this else? Will you not be sometimes skipping getting the answer when you're in this situation? But I the, the I think the the thing here is if I'm in. Oh, yeah, because you're right, because I'm going to skip over two. So maybe I just won't even bother doing this and I'll just do the. Yeah, so I do actually need to mutate the list then I guess from what I was doing because I was trying to go back to the other approach, but I guess I'll just mutate the list. So rather than skipping over one, what I'll do is just remove the next entry in this instance and then merge the times. Otherwise, I'll do something else. So we'll say else. <sighs> then what I need to do is literally say in this case, I can just remove that next entry. So I could say booked underscore times dot remove. Um, Actually, dot pop. Uh, this is going to be i plus one because I don't need that entry. Otherwise, then I'll merge the start time and in the end time. So I can actually just say booked underscore times i one equals and two. Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. So now I've done this. Let's just, I mean, assuming this is right, I've generated a list. And now what I can do is literally just do the, the blocks in between and then add them to the output. Assuming that's right, again, not 100%, but I think it's okay. So now we'll just loop through again. Uh, oh, and I need to make sure I increment i, otherwise that's not gonna be very good, is it? Uh, i plus equals one. I think that's fine, because if I remove the entry, then I shouldn't increment i. But if I don't remove the entry, then I should, and I should. And sorry, here, uh, Tim. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Can you hear me? Are you? Let me just pause yep. the timer one second. Are you still typing in the doc? Uh, yeah. Okay, just okay. I'm restarting the timer because it, it had just freaked out on my end, but now I see it. Sorry.
Okay, yeah, yeah, no worries. I I just got a reconnecting, but worse, like I have all the recording on my OBS yeah, yeah, anyway, perfect. so it's fine. Yep. Okay, uh, so actually what I've just done, sorry, in case you missed that, is I did I minus one, I plus one, because now what I'm going to do is if I pop the entry, I need to stay on whatever that current entry is to compare it to the next one, because I've just removed it. Okay. Um, but uh, otherwise, I'll increment my counter I plus one so that I can move to the next one and then start doing that. Um, since this is getting long, I'm going to go down onto the next page. Sure. Okay, and now we'll do this next while loop where I'm going to do that comparison thing that I talked about before, like the difference in between. So I'll say while, and I guess we're going to go i equals zero again. Or I could probably just do a for loop, to be honest. I don't think I need to do a while loop. Say for i in range booked underscore times. Um, what are you doing in this final this, for loop? This final for loop, what I'm going to do is figure out uh, the output. So essentially the difference between the end time and the start time of the next entry. Gotcha. And then if that time is enough, I will simply add that block. So the start time and the end time of the other entry to the output list. And then that should be good. So I need to do minus one there because uh, when I compare to the last element, I have I plus one, I don't want to have an index error. Okay. So I'm going to say if in this case, diff between, and we're just going to assume that I've written this function, but for now I've not, uh, this equals one. So actually, sorry, is greater than or equal to not 30 time. So if the difference between this is going to be, let's go just to make this a little bit cleaner. Uh, end one is going to be equal to booked underscore times I one. Yep. And start two is going to be equal to booked underscore time I plus one zero. So in that instance, we can say if the difference between start and one, start two, and we'll assume this gives us an absolute value difference so that that's not sure. gonna be negative. Yep. Um, then what we'll say is add that block, otherwise don't even bother. Okay, so then we'll say output dot append, and in this case, we should just do end one, start one, start two, and then return output. Now I'm like almost 100% sure that this probably doesn't work just because I think I've confused myself a lot throughout like what I was doing here. But the logic for my solution, I think makes sense. But I don't think this code will be 100% just I feel like I should say that. Do you um, do you mind running me through the uh, complexity sure. analysis? Uh, yeah, oh, sure. The complex analysis. Okay. So in this instance, we're going to run this loop will run. I guess it's going to be O n plus m where we're going to have nbp one s and uh, mbp p two s yep then for this time this book to list will be the same thing so this will be o n plus m uh, i minus one skipping it no that's fine so this will be o n plus m and then for this last one this will be o n plus m again as max so this should be an o n plus m complexity unless i'm missing something uh oh the compare times that this will run constant time my difference between over and constant time. I don't think I've done any interior loops inside book times that append that append actually the pop here. Sorry, where's my pop? Cause I know that pop will not run in constant time. Uh, this pop here, I am pretty sure will run in on. So I could actually have O N squared M because this pop I'm pretty sure doesn't run in constant time. I don't know, but since it's a list and it has to potentially move something, it would have to potentially shift every element in the list over depending on where I pop from. Yeah. That could be N. This my average case I think is still going to be N plus M, but uh worst case would be N squared plus M. So that would make the overall time complexity N squared plus M, including this pop, but pop usually is a pretty fast operation implemented in Python. So that should give me average time N plus M. I think that's right. Uh, okay. Space complexity, I'm going to have um, M plus M and then output will be, I guess, yeah, so I guess that's constant, so M plus M. Okay, so yeah, I, I think we, we just ran out of time. Sometimes, you know, interviewers will go a little bit over time, so maybe maybe I would ask okay. you, you know, very quickly how confident you feel about your code, but you sort of told me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. If you want, let's spend actually like two more minutes going over the code and then we will get into the debrief and sort of end the interview. But sure. out of curiosity, if you very briefly walk through the code, do you see any place where you think you have a bug? For sure. Okay, so my first main piece of logic 
I'm fairly confident in, although I would like to debug it a bit to obviously make sure. This is just going to essentially build that sorted list of all the times that both people are booked. So the way this logic works is essentially the same way that merge sort works. So what I'm gonna do is compare the entry in my first list at pointer one to the entry in my second list at pointer two. And then based on whatever that is, so if my pointer one um, in my first list is less than the pointer list, pointer two in the next list, I'll pen that in. Otherwise, I'll pen the other one. So this one should technically build that sorted list. Since I have these two pointers, I won't add the same element twice because what I'll end up doing is like once I get to the end of list one, then this will always be like greater than the other one. So it'll always add until we get to pointer two. And then this, I think like this condition works fine. If that yeah, yeah. I think I understand um, what you mean. I guess here, here, I think you would probably have to add something to your compare times to handle that. Cause like what you just said about this, once you reach the end of one of the lists, this will always be bigger or something. Yeah. Not really. Cause you will eventually, one of the lists will finish, so to speak before the other one and your condition yep. will still run. So you'll be accessing um, values past the list. Uh, no, I actually, I won't because I won't increment this pointer unless this specific condition is true. So what will end up happening is if I insert this because it's, oh, if I insert that because it's less than, okay, you're actually, sorry, you are actually are correct. Yeah, I'd have to do something like, I don't know why I thought that was gonna work. If pointer one is, you know, greater than, or I guess is equal to the len of P1S, minus one, then I would just add pointer two. And then same thing with the other way around. Yep, uh, something like you, that. You know what I'm saying that? Okay. Yep, exactly. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so that's like, that, that's a good bug to catch. I was kind of speeding through this one. Okay, so now this piece of logic here is essentially trying to kind of mutate that list to find the blocks that we can use for the next part of logic, which I'll talk about. So what this one is gonna do is compare the start time and the end time of the blocks that are beside each other because we know that they're sorted. So what that, that will allow me to do is essentially, I'm gonna create block like the largest blocks of time that I can that are beside each other, if that makes yep. sense. So like say yep. I have nine to like 1230 and this is 12 to seven, and that would be nine to 17 o'clock, right? That's what that's doing, or at least I'm trying to do in this block of code. So I'm comparing the times. If the end time is greater than the start time of the other one, then what I'll do is compare the end times. Yep. If the end time of the other one, so the one further right in the list is, less than the end time. So actually, I think that needs to be. Yeah, because here you compared you compared N2 to yeah. N1. So yeah, here yeah, you're that's, saying- I realized I think I did that backwards, yeah. So if N2 is less than N1, then you are popping the value, the next of value. The next. You are decrementing- yes, that, Okay, that makes sense. Yes. You're decrementing yes. I, and then you still increment it after to basically like keep moving forward. Exactly, yes. exactly. I, so I, I, I see what you mean. Yeah, and then here, this is just this is just mutating that list, so it's moving the N2 over. Okay, so yeah, so that negative one was needed to there. That's what happens when I guess you speed through. Okay. That last part, I think, is, is fine. Uh, let's jump into the debrief. Uh, why don't you start by sure. telling me, like, how you feel right now? Yeah, for sure. I mean, obviously, guys, like, you can probably tell based on kind of my mood and what we're going through. I don't feel great about this solution. This problem was challenging for me to kind of comprehend just because even like this string input was like there was a lot of stuff that was just like a lot of details to deal with at once like i kind of confused myself a little bit as i went through the different paths i'm happy i came up with a logical solution that makes sense i think the time complexity is actually pretty decent i didn't do anything too crazy with i mean i have this n square but that's just because of that pop but i didn't do anything too crazy with the complexity so that's okay i felt i explained my logic pretty well i asked decent clarifying questions but like just you gave me a little bit of hints for the solution. I think maybe if I had more time or if I had done a little bit more prep on something, maybe this diff more this difficult, I would have been able to come up with it a little bit faster and a little bit cleaner. Do you kind of get my like vibe from that? Yeah, yeah. So so listen, I'll give you my input. I think you did really yeah. well. I think your 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 assessment is probably how I would feel if I were you. Like you're kind of like, oh, I feel yeah. like I sort of got it, but at the same time, it's like not, <laughs> you know, it's not picture perfect. But yeah. the what you should take away from this, because again, from my point of view, you actually did very well. Okay. I would have to you know, take a little bit of time to, to grade you, so to speak, following the actual yeah. criteria that we're given, but you would probably get something along the lines of a higher or a strong higher decision here, at least from me, okay. uh, based on what I'm seeing. Yeah. The main reason is this. First of all, this is a very difficult question. This is actually a question that we have on Algo Expert. I know for a fact that you didn't do it based on the question yeah. you told me you did do. But so this is a very hard question on Algo Expert. The reason that it's very hard is exactly what you said. 
first of all, there's a lot of information. There are a lot of inputs. Yeah. There's a lot of different like types of inputs. You saw that they're strings, they're not numbers, they're military time. You have these daily bounds, which by the way, the daily bounds, you can simplify the problem by just creating artificial meetings at the beginning and end of each person's calendar that's, using the daily bounds, if that makes sense. That's kind of what I figured. Yeah, that's what I figured out. That's kind of what I was trying to figure out at the beginning. And then I was running low on time. And then that was just another piece. So we just skipped by it. But yeah, I did kind of think of that. Though. Exactly. But 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 even that, like, it's it's an additional piece of, of just complicatedness yeah. or complexity. And then the thing that's difficult about this problem is not so much the algorithm, because the algorithm or the logic is... is fairly intuitive and i think you you came mm -hmm. up with a version at the very beginning that i think would have worked fine i just pushed you in a slightly different direction that i think is a little bit simpler but you were doing just yeah. the the opposite order of operations but then the coding the coding is <laughs> yeah. difficult yes. transcribing this into code is difficult and i think you did a very good job like you pointed out the part of the code that's probably the the most shaky is this middle part here with the popping yeah <laughs> and the the fact that you're yeah. kind of overwriting this this thing and there's a way to do this without the popping that we don't need to get into here but i think that you yeah. you explained your logic soundly and you managed to transcribe it into something that you know seems like it's getting you know it's getting close to working probably there are edge yeah. cases here that aren't handled but it's getting close to working you also did a good job of using helper functions and that kind of thing to your advantage like compare times like this is the kind of thing where mm -hmm a must to do something along these lines. The, sure, yeah. the the div between here, a must, uh, yeah. absolute must, you know, yeah. otherwise like you're gonna get a, a gross algorithm. You did have oh, a little yeah, bug in the sure. in the merging, but that was, you, you caught it near the end. And again, it's like, this is the kind of problem where it would be a lot to ask to expect a candidate to code this entire solution perfectly in just 45 yeah. minutes, all the while solving it. So this is like, this is more than what I would expect, especially if you're if you're going for an intern position where we don't necessarily, you know, have the, the same bar as, let's say, a senior position, full time senior position. So, yeah, overall, I think you you did a good job. OK, well, I mean, that's OK. That's great feedback. Definitely makes me feel a little bit better because, yeah, I was kind of thinking about this. I'm like, this is a lot of like stuff that could go wrong with just the amount of information without being able to do some tasks and kind of dig through the different edge cases and all of that stuff. So, that yeah, that's great. And you also you also communicated very well. You asked a lot of clarifying questions. Uh, well, you you went through the example. And by the way, again, this is one of those problems where you saw that you didn't get into coding until there were like yeah. 20 minutes left. Right. Sometimes it's better to take your time to figure out everything and then get into the coding than than the opposite. But overall, I think For you sure. you handled your time well and you organized your code and all that you know, decently well. And if there's one lesson I would say to take away from this one, perhaps the most important thing of a problem like this is the way that you organize yourself and the way that you organize your code and everything. Maybe here it would have been mm -hmm. even cleaner to have like different functions for the merging, for this, what I call yeah. flattening and so on. But but you, you separated it in a way that made sense. But yeah, so overall, again, like good job. And, uh, you know, to, to all those of you watching who who may be like, whoa, this is such a complicated or such a, a big question. Again, you wouldn't be expected to solve it you know, perfectly with zero bugs, zero anything in an interview, especially for an intern position, but even for a full-time position. Wow. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I mean, that's some great feedback for sure. Cool. With that, Tim, thanks so much for, for doing this uh, coding interview. Thanks for sacrificing yourself uh, <laughs> for the YouTube audience. And uh <laughs> I think you're gonna you're gonna nail your your real interviews when you get to them. Well, I, I really appreciate it. This has been some great practice and some great feedback. And I mean, to everyone watching, you know, like listen to a lot of the feedback that he's giving because that definitely like this helps me a ton to do some stuff like this. And I would recommend to you guys do practice out loud, like do practice where you talk through your thought process. Because even see a few times here, right? I kind of getting stuck explaining what I want to do, and that's something that I think. And I mean, maybe you can say is really important is that the interviewer knows what you're doing. And I think I did a decent job of making sure that you were following along with kind of what I was thinking, but that was definitely hard for me throughout this process was not only trying to come up with the answer, but also communicate it in a way that, you know, he can understand what I'm saying. Exactly. And by the way, the, the last Great. thing that I'll add is just, uh, you know, like we said, this question is on Algo Expert. And if you look at the solution on Algo Expert, you'll see this like picture perfect, perfect variable names, perfectly written solution. That is the ideal to strive for but it's not what would be expected of you in a 45 minute interview. So that's that. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Clem. This has been great. Yep. Thanks so much, Tim.
If you made it this far, I want to thank you for watching the video. I really hope that you found it useful, informative, fun, enjoyable, awesome, funny, not stressful, smash the like button worthy. See you in the next one.